You're listening to a special episode of Neo Cash Radio. In the studio with you, it's JJ. Today's special episode features an interview with E.L. Herzog the Bancor, from the Bancor Protocol. E.L. is a member of the Bancor Foundation Council, and he joins us today. Hi, E.L. How's it going? Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's, it's great. It's doing great. Excellent. So, uh, could we just... Could you just tell us a little bit about yourself to start out with as we get uh, this interview rolling? Mm-hmm. So, uh, about myself. Yeah. So just I'm a, a little something. Yeah, sure. So I, I, I born and raised in Israel, um, and uh, I uh, I started coding when I was seven years old. I'm 43 today, so you know it's, uh, it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I, I, I joined the uh, uh, Israeli intelligence, and, okay. and this is where I actually learned most of what I know about computers and network, and then kind of moved from, you know, joined a startup, then created my own startup. Back in the 90s was contact.com, was social network. Then I, uh, I, I built a startup uh, called Metacafe, which was a video sharing site. Uh, at one point, competing head to head with YouTube, and wow. uh, and uh, since uh, 2011, when I first uh, saw Bitcoin, because I was using those video websites, you know, the, in my space, and I discovered a podcast talking about Bitcoin, uh, that changed my life forever. Nice. So you you, you basically discovered Bitcoin uh, pretty early on. I mean, 2011. That's I mean, that's back when Bitcoin was, you know, what, pennies or dollars at, at, at that point. Um, and so you've seen Bitcoin sort of evolution over time. What's your sort of thoughts on, you know, being an early Bitcoiner and seeing where it's at now? What, what are your, your thoughts on the, the Bitcoin situation? So <clears throat> I think that, uh, you know, everyone that uh, got excited about Bitcoin basically got excited about the, the same reason, but it's sometimes hard to describe it. and. Uh, uh, because it's like an intuition that there is something really, really great here, and, and sometimes words cannot do justice with what you're feeling. And I think that uh, you know, for me, it really was about uh, the, the the creation of the, the first user-generated currency. That's what I saw. You know, I came from user-generated video, America. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and, and and when I saw so I was thinking in those terms, and when I saw that, I said, "Oh my God, this is a user-generated currency, and it's liquid worldwide with so many exchanges. This is just absolutely amazing, and no one even knows who the user is. Like you know, someone uploading video to YouTube, and you don't know who that is. Yeah, so no one even knows. And and if you know, whenever user-generated entered like a space, then it kind of completely changed the entire space because 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 it you know it." Um, like like vi- YouTube changed video, like blogs changed journalism. So whenever something gets to be user generated, or even Facebook groups that everyone can create, it's really changed the, the the entire ecosystem. So I was looking forward for that change, and it didn't happen so quickly. And the reason that it was it didn't happen is because I I, I while I, I was looking at the revolutionary technology that enabled something new, enabled for anyone to create a secure currency, which is a revolution. But 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 there was no real good usage. So as an application, Bitcoin was only good for very specific kind of application, like like doing illegal stuff. Because right. Well, the, yeah. the credit card companies are blocking that. So this is where Bitcoin shines because you know you can do that with Bitcoin. But if you're looking at the other uses of money, how people use money when they use it, you know, to buy stuff or to to gift stuff or or even to, to, to get a loan or to give a loan or, or to you know all those things that people do with money, people did not have any real advantage in any of those applications. So as an application it only succeeded where it provided like a huge benefit which was mainly doing what is not allowed to and that's include Gambling and ransom and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Yes, so, exactly. so, and and I was actually all this time I was wor- working on user-generated currencies, in the area of community currency. I was so excited about that concept. With 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 my my team that we're still kind of working together, we did a lot of pilots in, in local currencies that were very successful, and we kind of learned the dynamic of how people use 
user-generated currency. That is kind of right. and, and we did that for almost four years. Of three, so that years. that led up to the creation of bank or you're saying that's sort of what <laughs> so, state of what we have now. So that it, those learnings really really helped me um, create create bank or but. The, the, the source of that was that Ethereum came, and, and yeah. Ethereum, Ethereum was, was was almost as big as excitement as I had from Bitcoin because, and, and it took me a while to kind of realize its true power. Yeah. And I I actually I actually had to actually only realize it after I started building apps for Ethereum. So how can I expect anyone to realize the power of Ethereum? Because not so many people are building apps on it, right? right. I only got it when I started developing on it. So it's kind of a magic trap that that, 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 that few people kind of are, are in, if you will. And and um, when we saw Ethereum, we started to figure out that, that we can solve one of the biggest problems that we have identified in the field of user generated currencies, and that's liquidity. Liquidity yeah. uh, is often you know, not, not discussed so much, but liquidity is what connects currencies to each other. If, uh, if we were local networks, I would say that the liquidity is the internet that connect all the local network. Because, you know, local network is useful, you can share files, you can do calendar, you can and uh, send emails into internally, but how much more useful it is when it's connected to a global network of interconnected networks. That's liquidity. So even though local currency are useful and there are thousands of examples all around the world, they are disconnected islands because they don't have liquidity to, um, uh, to the global network. And, and liquidity is not zero and one. Liquidity can be you know, a range. Uh, if you want to think how liquidity is measured, is what is the amount that moves the price, you know, I don't know, 5% or, or 10% would be a good question relative to the market cap. So you can, you can, actually, you can actually measure liquidity in terms of how much it moves the price when one converts one store of value to another. And, and it was a long process of almost six months within it, we realized that we may have a solution to the problem that people don't think of as a problem because they say, oh, there's liquidity, um, you know, people using exchanges, but exchanges are manual. It's like me saying, yeah, there, you can move data between networks. People just need to kind of uh, take a USB drive and move it between the network. You don't need yeah. internet. And right. well, it requires labors and that like, labor is, is coming to make profit. All those market makers and traders are providing liquidity in order to make prof profit. And, and, and by using smart contracts and learning and thinking, I mean, it's a new state of mind to start. How do you work? How do you build stuff for a for a global computer? For for a, that that you know you deploy code and, and and you don't own that code anymore that you deploy. That, I mean, how you you even think about it? That that takes time. It's like learning object oriented. It, it doesn't happen in a day, right? No, it's all brand new. It's never this this yeah. is unexplored territory. Exactly. So, so while we were thinking and, and processing it and realizing it step by step, we figure out that you can, by, by simply having a programmable currency, which is a concept that was never possible before, a programmable currency right. that, that understand that, that can manage a reserve and it can act as its own micro, uh, non-profit automatic market maker. That's what the, 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 the program, the 40 lines of codes, or, you know, uh, it probably could be, but it, it's, uh, that, that's what it does. It, 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 can, it holds another currency, which is liquid. So, for example, BNT is already deployed. It's the first smart contract, uh, the first smart token using a smart contract that, that allow you to buy BNT for Ether or sell or liquidate BNT to Ether. And it's being live since the 22nd, like a month ago, 22nd of last, last month. Well, let's start there for a second. Let's go back uh, and just briefly touch on the token sale. Now, you, you offered a new approach with the, the hour minimum time. The sale was very popular. The Ethereum network had suffered under the strain and a lot of people sending in requests. In the end, you collected funding well over the goal. And you, it was just, you know, basically 
store at Token Sale. And what was I just want to know what what it was like at the Bancor headquarters when this this was going on, and I'm sure you guys were uh, stressing out over the network, and there was just so many different variables. Just tell me what the human factor was behind the scenes that I don't think makes it to Reddit. But what was it like in in, in your your team when that was happening? So you know we were very very excited. Uh, I mean we really felt the momentum uh, in the last. 24, 48 hours, you know, this is where we really felt that there's something going to be here that is meaningful. And 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 then, um, you know, the time has came, the, the, the time has, has come, and we, we kind of, uh, 5 p.m. Israel time, uh, and, and, and I'm looking at the, at the screen with my friend, and almost nothing is happening. Very little comes in, and and you start thinking, was 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 that all a dream? Did we imagine that kind of good stuff is happening? I mean, why so little? That was the first kind of feeling in, in, the, in, the, in the office. But what what went wrong? Right. And then we started as time went by. We started to get after 20, 30 minutes, tons of messages and calls from everyone that you know. Uh, we met and told us, oh, you're great, I'm going to participate or whatever. And people are saying, um, look, it, it doesn't work. Ethereum network doesn't work. I'm trying to submit the transaction, it's stuck, it's failed, and we're getting that from all over. Okay. And, 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 and also my Ethereum wallet was working, and in the meantime, uh, um, our servers are under constant uh, DDoS of and, and, and at that point, you know, we figure out that the spirit was that we need, a, we wanted to, to, to let everyone that, you know, push the button in the first hour to be, to participate. And we realized that the Ethereum network just crashed basically. So we ex- made the extension to three hours. Right. And, you know, after two and a half, a little less, uh, a little bit too, more than two hours, we started to get a lot of reports that that uh, you know we uh, people succeeded in transacting, and uh, and and we, we took the decision you know that 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 this is was enough because for us what was important is to 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 allow anyone that followed us read the blogs, kind of you know made the decision before the the, the token generation event made the decision before, we wanted to allow all of these people to, to participate. That was important. We didn't want money that would kind of follow that money. So people will hear, hey, bank or raise, I don't know, a lot of money, uh, let's put our money. We didn't want that money because because we wanted people that kind of followed uh, the word, the, the intuition, not the numbers, if you will. Right. And, yeah. and, you know, and that was the intention, and I think we were close because a lot of people did still complain and report to us that they were not able uh, to, to, to participate even though they tried and and we know some of them personally so you know it was not 100% inclusive as we hope but we hope that it was as inclusive as we can because there were 11,000 participants in three hours and two and a half hours essentially I think that's that's that is, that is definitely a large number I mean if you're looking at token sales just on average the number of people will walk away with tokens is a number in about four to five hundred, and uh, so it's, it's you know it's much more concentrated in fewer hands that way. But uh, th- that was that was one of my takeaways was that so many people did get a chance to participate in the bank or uh, token sale, and then you you basically had this extra money that you have this buy floor that you you built in so that if people uh, are are maybe uh, maybe upset with with the way things turned out they can basically get back their their uh, through yeah. this this buy contract at the uh, the same price they put it in or the same ratio, right. um, and then but you also mentioned and you know people well, I have a link to that people can find that we, we don't need to talk about that right now but you mentioned that someone might be able to or not you specifically but someone might be able to get a better rate if they were to liquidate it through the BNT uh, token contract itself. Can you just sort of mention how someone were, would be able to do that? Like, what's the steps for that? Okay, so 
It's important to understand price floor is a completely different mechanism. It's something that we came up with uh, because we heard um, a lot of people claiming that uh, being inclusive makes us greedy. Right. And we said, look, we are honestly inclusive. We are not greedy. You know, we don't like. It's not the reason that we want more money. We want people to let in. So we said, hey, how about that? It was a response to that outcry, if you will. Sure. Uh, and there, it, it was look everything above our um, uh, about our, uh, our uh, cap, which was uh, two fifty out of that fifty wanted to reserve the two hundred ether. Everything above that amount not going to us. Obviously, part of it going to the reserve. I'll get to that. But but everything like eighty percent of that will go to the price floor, which is a contract that we just buy back the tokens in the price of the token generation event. That's what it does. And it included 117,000 ether after the token generation event, and and that a very simple. It, so so what it does is it creates the on-chain buy wall, if you will, uh, okay. of, of of 120,000 ether for a fixed price, which is the price in the token generation event, which was uh, uh, you get one ether for 100 uh, BNTs. Okay. So that's one thing. That's the price flow, and and you know, if thinking about it ahead, we didn't plan originally for for the price flow, but but after we did it, we thought to ourselves that you know maybe we should not time the the uh, the token generation event because if you're not like uh, getting the money yourself and and you're putting it in a price flow that actually protect the investors from not losing money for a large extent, not all of them, but for 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 you know, uh, it gives you a serious buy wall. If you do that, so you really can let anyone in, because they probably you know as more coming in, more can get out in, yeah, the, in, exactly. in the initial price. So, so um, you know, we would do it differently, but you know, it it, 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 is, it is what it is. Yeah. And and the other model is is essentially what Banco Protocol is, and that the, the BNT is not an ERC twenty token like every other token. BNT is a smart token, meaning that the token itself, the con the smart contract that runs the token itself, it has property, it has ether, it holds ether, and because okay. the, 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 the BNT contract holds ether, it provides an, an an API, if you will, to anyone that uses Ethereum that allows anyone to purchase BNT directly from the token itself, from the smart token itself. Purchase BNT in exchange for Ether, or liquidate BNT and get Ether in, in return. So, what it means is, is that this token does not need to be listed in any exchange in order to be liquid, because every time you buy it, the price goes up, and every time you sell it, the price goes down. So there is price discovery going all the time. But it right. always remains liquid, and not only that it remains liquid, it remains much, much more liquid, measured in how, you know, how would you move the price when you cash in and out, much more liquid than other uh, uh, tokens in the market and that are traded in exchanges. Meaning that if you want to sell an amount of, of bank or the same amount of uh, same comparable token that it will affect the comparable token on exchanges much worse and you know in, in terms of price than it would be banco because banco is now set for a high, high liquidity and one of the things that you can do with with, with banco you can set the liquidity i can actually you know um, uh, adjust it to, to what i think is the best and 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 that makes it a very unique monetary experiment because it's again it's the first money that its own that function as its own market maker right yes it's it's uh it's it's impressive and it reminds me of the, the whole uh, uh your dog i heard you like tokens so i put a token inside your token it's that that whole meme it just works so well but let me let me get to to bancor it's it's in alpha right now and uh you, you have some updates on your um uh, your tele uh what do you use um what do you use for communication Hmm? You don't use Slack. You use uh, Telegram, right? Yes, you, uh, I'm, I'm also tele Telegram. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the, 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 right now it's an alpha. 
you have some uh, update. You're, you're basically there's an update here saying that you are waiting for a green light from legal by the end of the month, and then you're looking to deploy. But obviously, that's that's flexible. Um, what is is there a beta phase that you're planning, or is or is there you know what's what's the next steps of development for Bancor, and and what sort of functionality can we expect in the short term versus some of the long term ideas? So you know. Uh, Bancor has uh, shipped, I would say, you know, two products in the main net till today. The first product that we shipped was uh, our bounty, bounty program that we had used, you know, Ethereum ERC20 tokens as the bounty program. And that the, the whole system used the Bancor a platform that you can try out at uh, app.demo.bancor.network. Uh, the bounty program was on app.bancor.network because that's the actual app on the main net. And we've been using that. You know, it's good to start with, with with using your platform for tokens that are kind of you know gameable tokens that are are not real money yet. Uh, okay. So so it's, it's it's more secure to start this way. And and we've launched that and worked with that. And, and that bounty program is uh, over for now, but will be we started soon. The second thing that we deployed to the mainnet was the smart token itself, which the first one was BNT. So. I would expect uh, several more uh, announcements, uh, perhaps uh, by the time this show is broadcast, uh, there will be several announcements of tokens that are using BNT as a reserve because they are also a smart token. So essentially we guarantee new token liquidity. What we you know, found out is that the token uh, creator is actually very much interested in a guaranteed liquidity and relative stability. That is the interest of the token issuer. As sometimes the market would have other preferences, especially yes. that profit from volatility, but that is not the best interest of the token issuer. And 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 the the premise that using smart contracts we can guarantee liquidity and stability to the price of their token because this price is then translated to all other exchanges through arbitrage. So it cannot be different than the price on any other exchange. So 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 by, by using Bangor Protocol they guarantee liquidity and stability for the token. And and the important thing is that it doesn't matter how small you are. Even if you're creating a token which is kind of a loyalty point in a coffee shop, it can be completely liquid because you don't have this barrier to liquidity um, that 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 um, you had until today. When you know you need to be big enough in order to attract for-profit market makers and traders. Uh, so so this this uh, new situation, uh, you know, maybe. Uh, Opens the long tail of tokens. So this this is this is something that is already working, and you know, since again, twenty uh, second of, of last month, it's already working, and it's working well so far. Um, we, we may uh, have some improvements, uh, minor improvements, but we're happy with how it works so far. And we're gonna have more tokens being uh, issued as smart tokens. Uh, as well as um, set set up the token changer uh, as you um, as you mentioned before. So so token changer is essentially a solution for existing tokens. That how you kind of activate bank or protocol on an existing solution, and 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 issuing the smart token is how you can do it for a new token, which uh, have uh, some advantages. Well, let's let's talk. There's so I, the white paper is really interesting, and and I really advise anyone that's interested in banker to go and read it. But I want to talk about the constant reserve ratio, and and I'm really focusing on that for a moment. And yes. what is, what is the constant reserve ratio, and why does it matter? So you know the, the constant reserve ratio is is the heart of everything, because <clears throat> the constant reserve ratio means something very simple that. Um, the token is pricing itself, essentially, because at any moment it's willing to buy itself or sell itself with no spread. There is slippage, but no spread. 
and 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 the token is is willing to buy itself. And how does it calculate its price using the CRR? How so? Very simple to understand. So, for example, BNT has reserve in Ether. So it holds right now um, approximately, I would say, uh, the the reserve would be around eighty thousand Ether. Okay, it's not like that. But is that ten percent or is that what percentage of? 10%. It's, it's 10%. ten percent. Okay. Yeah. Now, this means that if it's ten uh, percent, uh, then the market cap of the token is, if that's ten percent, is eight hundred ether. That would be the market cap of the token for for the token to calculate its own price. And if that's the market cap, you divide that number by the supply, and you know what is the price per BNT. And this is how the price per BNT is calculated. Now, the reserve is not constant, because whenever someone buying BNT, then the reserve grows. And whenever someone is selling BNT, the reserve shrinks. So because the, the number of Ether in reserve grows and shrinks, and the price is calculated according to the reserve balance, then it means that the price would be moving up and down, up and down, based on how many people are buying it versus, I mean, how much is being bought versus how much is being sold. Now, are, so, you so, this, this, are you talking about the smart token contract? I mean, the, 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 yes, the I mean, the, the smart token contract is the contract that implements the the, the concept of CRR, the, right. the, the, the way that that the price is calculated. It's a very simple formula to calculate the price. It's basically reserve balance, the price equal reserve balance divided by supply multiplied by the CRR. That's the, that's the formula. This is how the price is calculated. It's a very simplistic. And, and, and the thing is that, you know, it doesn't matter if you buy 10 times or you buy, uh, you know, I, I buy 100 uh, tokens in, in 10 uh, different transaction or 100 different transaction or a single transaction, you will get the exact same price. So, so that's, uh, 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 that, that's kind of how, how it works. And, uh, and uh, you know, this whole calculation you can be seen in the white paper. Again, it's not, it's not rocket science. I was actually, you know, in, in the lowest group in math, there were like three groups and like the lowest for the like dumbest kid, that was my group. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a math person in, in school, back in school. Sure, you know. sure. So, so I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not very strong, but it's very simple mathematics, and and uh, you know just a mechanism in order to ensure that no matter where the price moves up and down, how many people buying, how many people selling, the price can move as much as it can. There's always going to be in BNT 10 percent of the market cap in a very liquid currency, ether in this case. Right. This is always going to be ten percent of the market cap in a very liquid, and that what ensures liquidity, constant liquidity for everyone, on a high level. Now you mentioned token changers as one of the use cases described in the white paper, as well as it's something very, very much in use today. I mean, Shapeshift.io does a lot of business, and you're basically saying that with the smart token contract, you can set up your own uh, token changer that does the same thing. But what I want yes. to talk about something different that's really interesting to me is the decentralized token baskets, and yeah. it, you know that's that sounds like such an uh, uh, an amazing sort of idea. Can you just sort of touch on that for a moment? Sure, sure. So, the first of all, it's just a fun fact. There is no difference between a you know a, a token changer and this decentralized basket because. Uh, it just you know it could be a different number of of different uh, reserves because in a token changer you will have two reserves for example bnt and gnosis uh, gno uh, so gno bnt and gno that could be the two reserves but but if you hold the the, the, the token changer itself you're actually holding a basket of bnt and gno so right. it's actually the same thing. Now, I'll, I'll explain how it works. So one of the things that we actually didn't figure out initially when we, we kind of uh, drafted the banker protocol, we didn't figure out that you can use more than a single reserve. 
uh, we always thought about it as a single reserve. When we started to kind of simulate what happens with multiple reserve, something very interesting, interesting happened because you know it's if you have two reserves and let's say that one reserve is fifty percent uh, BNT and the other reserve is fifty percent GNO. So that actually means that you have a total of hundred percent of the value of the tokens in reserve. Now that is the, you know the very definition of basket. Basket. Mm-hmm is a token that can kind of worth whatever the other token that it's holding is you know uh, our, i mean that, that's that's the essence of, of of what it is so basically you can you can create just a smart token with multiple reserves and if the the total crr accumulates to be a hundred then it means that it is a hundred percent backed and uh, and in that case it can function as 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 a, as a basket now the, the way that it works is that you know whenever someone is buying something or selling something, it changes the price of that specific token, and in that case, it creates an arbitrage opportunity for someone to kind of move liquidity in order to realign uh, the prices with the market prices, which is what arbitrage does today between exchanges. We were all, uh, so so arbitrage is a very important uh, part of our ecosystem. So because of that, because you know that no one kind of would leave money on the, on, on, on the table, you can be sure that, that this, the basket or the token changer would actually reflect the, 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 the price in the markets, the actual price, uh, the conversion price that is in, uh, in, in, in the open markets. So it's a very different mechanism and it uses a very different ecosystem. Um, when we talked to Gnosis about it, they told us that they were thinking about doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and uh, we asked them why, so, so they told us, look, we, we thought that would be a great oracle uh, to know prices between uh, different uh, assets. So, so we, think, um, we think that there's definitely um, a, a way here to create a different ecosystem of of, of, of liquidity yeah. ecosystem wow, yeah. that provides in, in, in a different way and uh, we're gonna see how it goes yeah no it's it's definitely a very novel approach and, and the fact that we're moving beyond just smart contracts now the tokens themselves have become more intelligent um, I just think that's a natural evolution of this and maybe maybe we'll just end up using tokens that pretty much do everything one day um, <laughs> but it seems you like know, that's that's a really good way to decentralize things and sort of, you know, you don't, you're not so dependent upon so many layers of network uh, in, in the more uh, token sense, you know, it's, it's just such a small, modular, uh, portable thing. So uh, what, where uh, you have a bunch of partnerships listed on your website, I don't want to take up time talking about all of them, but what, you know, what's the highlights of your partnership? Um, uh, what are you looking forward to with that? And, and, and you know, just a, a brief uh, look at that. So, uh, as, as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Gnosis is, you know, it's a, it's a very important uh, partnership for us because uh, that is uh, probably going to be our first uh, token changer and, uh, and, and we'll, have, uh, we'll have a chance to kind of test out a model that we've been kind of working on and theorizing for a long time. So that's very meaningful for us. Uh, this this experiment and um, the second thing uh, which is uh, very exciting is, is the partnership we have with the status uh, that we want to kind of allow status users to be able to kind of use everything bank or related so you know issuing tokens liquid tokens and and and, uh, and and, and um, using them and sending them and, and storing. So the, the entire kind of uh, uh, user interface, both for token issuers and for uh, token users, is something that we look forward to, to take into uh, status. We are already today a bot, like a chat bot based platform. So we integrate it to Telegram and Facebook. Uh, Telegram works better, actually, in that case. And. Um, so that's the, uh, the, that's kind of the, the, the one that comes to mind immediately, 
And just just a small note about what you you said earlier about kind of smart moving beyond smart contracts to tokens, and you know you know that tokens are smart contracts. I mean, they are implemented on smart contracts, but they're very simple smart contracts tokens, right. and they're so simple that you know we had many solution, many alternative solution in for for tokens in a non smart contract uh, blockchain. But apparently, token has been become the most important uh, usage of smart token uh, of smart contracts in our time that, that that's just what happened uh, that, that you know the I, all the, the tokens out there in the ICO I mean Ethereum is becoming a platform for token and I think that you know what's what we're trying to do here is, is saying let's take this very very basic token implemented on a smart contract and and kind of use the the, 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 poten- the potential that it's running on a smart contract and, and it can do stuff. And, and we're trying to teach that token to do more things, hence smart token. And there are like other things that we're planning for in, in kind of part of that strategy. I mean, I, I could see a future usage of, of a token basically holding some, uh, some identifying information of yours and privately that you can use to verify and, and, and little badges, so to speak. and. Uh, you know things like that I think uh, going forward will just bring so much more utility but um, okay let's, let's just to wrap this up here I really appreciate this time you've given me to talk about all this stuff uh, what what are some of like you, the sort of dream like like looking ahead nothing that's actually gonna happen I'm not asking for for dates or, or anything like that but just sort of what is sort of like your dream goal for for the Bancor network and the bank Bancor protocol like but in the future, um, it's, it's very simple. It's, it's very simple and straightforward. Uh, and we had met multiple examples of that in the past. We have seen our fair share of technology, which enabled the user-generated long tail of something. Whether that something again was blogs or videos or Facebook groups or subreddits or whatever or memes. But, but we, we had platforms to enable that, and we want uh, to build the platform that enables the long tail of user-generated token, generated currency, uh, to enable this tool. This is a technology, like writing is a technology, and currency is a technology, an ancient and very important technology that we've been using for, for, for a long time, and now anyone can initiate. That's a new thing. Right. And we want to make it very simple and straightforward. The, the, the users that we had on our user-generated tokens were like moms and, and high school kids. So we know how to build simple user interfaces. We want to make it very simple for anyone to generate a token, and liquidity is the key to do that. So we need a solution for the liquidity that we now have, and now we're looking forward to enable the, the, the long tail of the generated currency. That's uh, to see things that we cannot imagine of how people, because who could imagine how people would use YouTube? Who right. could imagine how would people use blogs? Who could imagine how would people use Reddit? No one. This is no. the beauty of human creativity. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to be surprised. Yeah, there you go. So where can people find out more information about what you have going on? So our website is bancor.network. There are many videos uh, and uh, interesting material, and I really uh, encourage everyone to, to check out the uh, demo application at app.demo.bancor.network. It's actually linked from the home page. It's uh, it's um, kind of a, a nice nice look toward where we're going. It's actually mobile and desktop friendly. So, uh, you know, really looking to get feedbacks about that and, uh, and, and we're going to have some nice bounties, if, you know, for audience that is looking forward to, to break stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, hey, that's part of the process. Of course. Right? Of course. Well, hey, stay on the line here after this, but thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you taking the time out for this interview. Uh, it's, thank you for having me. You're listening to Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. Tune in every Wednesday for our main show, neocashradio.com.